Hello. Hi, Hello. chat. I love you. You love me? I love you, and I love chat as well. I love you too. It's a three-way thing. Hey, first factor. things first. First things first. I just fought it massively. Anyway, oh, I've been thinking about you lately, about something. Oh, shit. And I was literally, about me. I was having my phone in my hand, and I was texting you something, but then I deleted it. Here we go. All right. I'm going to share what it was. Okay. All right. Okay. I like Steel Division 2. It's a good game, but I only enjoy it in co-op. And I had a co-op partner called Fabian. He's some uh, metrosexual gamer or something. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but he now is gone. He has a different career. He doesn't chill with him anymore. So I was thinking, man, I really enjoyed Steel Division. They just released the big, big co-op campaign. And I was wondering, is Dave the right person for a big, big Steel Division campaign? And Dave, I, I was having the message ready in my phone. And then I felt like, I think he's not for a big Steel Division campaign. He's too chill and stuff. He's... I didn't know. So am I wrong there? What do you think about that? No, you, you got it dead on, 100%. Yeah. I played that game. I played the first one when PDX gave it me, and I played it for like an hour, and I'm like, I'm just not feeling this. Okay, I, I, I was guessing that. It's okay. Yeah, I'm just yeah I heard it's got then. co op recently, hasn't it? Yeah, you can now play. Um, You got, you remember the Army Commando campaign? You know what that is? No idea. Oh, let me show you real quick. It's so cool. Just uh, real quick, man. I'm such a fan of it. Uh, in my opinion, it's the most. Uh, how do you people that celebrate World War II and shit? Uh, Wearaboos, right? Wearaboos. And this right here is, the, in my opinion, the biggest wearaboo gameplay you could ever see in the world. Now, uh, watch okay. this. Alright, okay. And uh, you go to solo, you go to uh, Army General. Now, watch this. You don't notice, Dave? Watch this. Alright, I'm watching. Watching. I'm showing you. I'm really into this stuff, to be honest. I really like this. I almost played one full on stream, but then I got wrecked. It's really loud. So what you do is, Primary check this. You have a certain excerpt, a little piece of the historical real front line. In this case, Orsha, the Russians pushing Germans. And you see this? It's a big, big mini game where you have to micro every single division. You spawn even new divisions and you have to play every single battle. And the game right. is saving every progress. If you lose one division, it's lost forever. Shit like that. And you have to really realistically play this. It's super hardcore. Super insane, man. Uh, but they finally released this as co-op. You cannot play this with a friend. And it's it's crazy, man. It's, you really have to be a little bit mental for that shit. And it probably takes uh, dozens of hours to finish it. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that solo? Is it just efficiency? I, I did already a bunch like one year ago. And I died and got mad. But um, Steel Division is a game that I don't enjoy solo because it's maybe boring, I would say. And with a co-op, it, it's more fun to have a friend and you have to talk together and, and make certain uh, moves. There's also very different campaigns like here, the Russians invading Finland. You can play the Finnish defending against Russia and shit. Really, really cool. And I'm looking forward to it. Finland yeah, is on the brink of... Yeah, but my Steel Division is, is a bit weird because I like That's games so that are really historically connected. And it's, it is a historical game, isn't it? Because you're playing out actual divisions on a realistic scale. But the one thing that, like, disconnects me from the game is that most of the time you're so zoomed back so far, all you're looking at is farmlands. And I, I wanted to, like, look at the guns. I want to look at the Air Force. I want to look at the tanks. And for the most part, you don't really get to appreciate them because you zoom back just looking at... Norman Fields, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that, but isn't that realistic? Like in real yeah. life World War II, you look at a lot of fields, yeah? <laughs> yeah and when I you're into that, I like really so. simulating World War II warfare, Steel Division 2 is really your game, man. That's for sure. You're into fields, that's the game for you. <laughs> that's actually true. <laughs> actually true. David, man, how are you feeling, bro? How are you doing? You know what? I'm not too bad. I've had a long recording session this morning. It went exactly how I'd planned, so I'm feeling optimistic about that. Do you ever feel like when you're like staring at a screen for a really long time that you kind of like zone out? I always call it potato brain. It's where you kind of like feel like maybe you're slightly floating just from staring at a computer screen for like a really long time. Huh. Off stream, yes, but never on stream. It's Do you like mean you like daydreaming for a second or? It's, it's like you're in front of the game for a long period, let's say six, seven, eight hours, constantly, no breaks whatsoever, and then you move away from the computer, and then you're almost like in like maybe a slight daydream almost, like you, you, your concentration isn't 100%, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. You're still in the game. That's human. I, I get that a lot off stream. Like, like I play games off stream and I just completely zone out. For example, I play this game Vermintide 2, where you actually have to pay attention, but when I'm alone, 
I watch stuff on my second screen and I play so bad because I'm just not paying attention. I'm just zoning off to some random YouTube video or something. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got a little bit of that right now. And I was like, oh, a little bit apprehensive about this podcast thinking, oh no, is, am I going to be uh, in the zone or not? But I'm feeling pretty good, actually. No, I mean, good. after six hours, man, that's cool. That's okay, yeah, man. Yeah. I want to yeah. talk about Italy to begin with. I want you to kind of summarize it. I feel like you don't take enough breaks. Is this, this is the longest break you've ever taken, isn't it? Yes, in my entire life. Yes. In your entire life? If you don't take China, yes, that was the longest break of my life. Yeah. Holy. So it was two German straight weeks. Yes. Is it? Oh, okay. It was pretty common for me as a young lad to like go away for either like 10 days or two weeks. We'd always go abroad and do that. I mean, that was sure, like... I would have vacation with my parents and stuff, but never this long and on this scale. Yeah. It's weird being self-employed and, and having work, isn't it? Because did, did, did it ever bother you like on a daily basis? Like I'm losing my sub counts, yes. I'm losing my pro progress. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as a self-employed man, and you don't even have to be streamer chat. You can be whatever, self-employed. Taking time off and vacation means that your baby is going to get hurt. You're going to lose income, you're going to lose money. In my case, you lose subs. Uh, yes, I had that in my brain. I was like, oh man, my stream, uh, when I come back, how will it be, blah, blah, blah. But you have to turn that off. You have to give yourself some time to breathe. If you don't do that, you're going to go mad. You, you need a little bit of distance in a way. I think I've reached that point right now. I think I do need... I need something like a, a convention. I need a paradox con just to be around the corner to go somewhere and just disconnect from everything. Because right now I just feel like I'm in the grind and I'm, I feel like, you know, the most sad thing I do in the morning is I write a to-do list of all the things I got to do today. And you know what most of the time is? The list is identical nearly every single day. Practice a video, record a video, possibly do a live stream, update a thumbnail. It's really boring shit. Yeah, I once read this thing that 80% of things that are on to-do lists are never done. So to-do lists are kind of almost futile not going I anywhere. like the sticky notes app and i like constantly log like little minor things for to-do lists and it helps me like do the rest of the list for the day like something really minor like i don't know take out the bins or something like that and when you've done that you feel like you hit the some of the hard things i don't know i disagree with that actually i think for the most part i do my to-do list nearly enough always on a daily basis 99 percent done do, do you feel like you with the the flow of like routine with what you do with live stream do you feel like do you feel like you get enough done? Not at all. For four years I'm a streamer now, I've never been productive. Never. Like you see, I always have these little books here and I always put things in these books and then I want to like a German, I want to like a to-do list. I cross them out when they're done and I never do them. There, there's there's some things in these books I haven't done in months, man. Uh, I'm very, very lazy, but I, I was trying to use my vacation to change my bit a bit, AKA that when I come back, which is now that I am a bit more productive, take more care of stuff, which I I, I am doing, I think. A bit more active now. I'll put you on the spot. Give me something out your to-do list. Come on. Oh my, oh, my to-do list. So let me take a look at my to-do list. First of all, someone owes me money and didn't give me back. That's the thing. I <laughs> I used to be in a caution app and I was paying a caution. Uh, is that the word caution? Caution? Right. Uh, for 250 Maybe. euros, they're not paying me back. I have to fix that. Then it says you're finished reading the book. Then do your taxes. Never done that. Then podcast project. <laughs> Prepare the podcast with two journal. Haven't done that at all. Tommy K, uh, merch management. Improve the merch. Haven't done that. Uh, write an email to your chiropractor. I actually did that. And lots and lots of more stuff, man. Oh, Talk wow, to sponsors, okay. blah, blah, blah. I never fucking do that shit. But I'm getting better yep. now. I'm getting better now. <laughs> Mine is so normal. Like, organize the garage. Uh, De-weed the front garden. Fix <laughs> leaky sink. Fix I don't have, squeaky. I don't have <laughs> any... <laughs> never in my to-do list there is, like, household stuff. Never. <laughs> really? All right, never, okay. never, never. <laughs> I think on a daily basis, I'll write lists that are just simple stuff. So I, I don't know. I just feel like I can tick them off and I feel like I'm making progress, even though realistically I'm not. How have you been coping with the weather recently? It's been really slowing me down. In Germany, it's okay right now. In Germany, it's okay. A lot what of was it clouds. Like last week? Uh, 17 to 19 degrees. Very, very nice. I like it. Oh, I like it. And it's I feel like, like I'm a bit uh, used more. Uh, in Italy, I was just burning to death. And yeah, now if it's yeah. 30 degrees in Germany, it's like, oh, at least it's not Italy. All good. All, all easy, man. I thought I really enjoyed hot weather, but for the last 10 days in the UK, we've had 30 degree days over and over and over again. And it's been an absolute nightmare. My productivity has dropped massively. I'm just not doing enough. And it's, it starts to eventually beat me up. Like I'm just not doing enough in the day. Iceland. I always wonder when like young, pe <laughs> young people listen to us and they're like, do these guys complain about their do-do lists, about their health? <laughs> the weather is too hot for them. Dude, we, we truly, this is truly the boomer cast, man. That's for sure. I think that's it as a kid. I feel like you have 
you've nothing to worry about you just kind of go with the flow but as an adult like when you like your rhythm your your little autistic schedule breaks you're like oh no yeah. <laughs> a big big issue for me to be productive is the, the number one main reason is and this might come across as arrogant but once again just want to be real if i will behave very lazy and not do a lot of things i'd still be successful and that is very dangerous if I just don't do anything and just do my eight hour stream, I still am successful. It's not like I have to really do my to-do list or I'm going to die. I'm going to become homeless, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's a big thing in the brain, for me at least, that makes me unproductive. Because I'm like, oh, if I don't do my tax today, what the fuck's going to happen? They need, they yeah. want my money. They, they want my shit. I can do what I want. And that makes you unproductive. Mm. Like you, you don't depend on being productive anymore. Which is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. We've, we've been, we've seen both ends of the spectrum. We've we've worked the normal job and having the boss tell us what to do and having the normal shifts we've got to work. And then we've done what we do now. I feel like we have, I feel like we have a perspective that's kind of uh, we understand our privilege how how well we've got it right now. You know. Yeah. But there's 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 the there's the, there's some Twitch streamers out there, YouTubers that probably don't have that luxury. Like they've not worked. A standard job and they don't know how great they've got it. It's it's I think it's a nice position to be in. Yeah. I just always feel like because I want to change myself that there's so much more potential. When you're self-employed, you decide about success most of the time. You decide if you're creative, have new ideas, how much money you make, blah blah blah. You decide that. And oftentimes I think that I and I think many other people have more potential, many content creators. But you often get stuck on a certain level because the level is so good. <laughs> Like, I often yeah. think about this. I could I could really work on my diss track and hire a production team and make a music video and then blah, 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 and big, big shit, man, uh, and go crazy. But then I feel like, well, if I don't do it, well, there's no repercussions. I'm still on a good level. What's the next step for you then? So now you're back. You're back into the rhythm. Where's, where's the next mountain to climb? Well, to be more productive, to to push the stream. That's my ultimate goal in life right now, to push the stream to the next level. Uh, reaching new phase, heights. Phase five. Yeah, phase five. You know, I don't even man. know what phase, what phase are we at right now. Uh, I don't know anymore, man. I have no <laughs> idea. Pa phase 69 or something. <laughs> We're still missing 1.5k subs to be even back on normal, man. Uh, so gotta work on that. But, yeah. I just feel like uh, here's something I want to ask you. Sure. When I was younger, I never felt the summer hole. I didn't give a fuck about it. I was just playing games all summer. I never saw what the summer hole means. You know how people talk about the summer hole? Nothing happens. Nothing gets released. Since I'm a streamer, for the first time, I feel the summer hole. There's no new games. The energy is a bit different, a bit lower. Less people are around. They're all on vacation. They sub less. Um, there's really this... Since I'm a streamer, I feel the, the summer hole. Yeah. Before, I've never felt that. Never. Maybe the also lulls. Corona hole, maybe you can say. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That was a topic that I put on my to-do list every single time we did our podcast, and I just never really got on it. I mean, in the UK now, we finally officially, officially came out of lockdown Monday of last week, so there's no more legal restrictions. And it's really strange to go on Facebook and stuff and see people like... Hmm go to nightclubs and go to i don't know arenas and whatnot it's it's a strange experience what's the progress like in germany we haven't opened up yet i now don't have to wear a mask anymore in shopping right. but many people still do it but we're, we're not out of lockdown yet i was at a concert yesterday and there was really you have to show a test and everything oh wow I mean, it sounds really scary that the uk already opened do you guys already have data on incidents rising again or something yeah uh new reports of covid are practically going through the roof but hospitalizations aren't following with it because the vaccination rate is mm. so high so it's as, as it looks at the moment it is going to plan it, will there be a tipping point where they get so many cases they won't be able to handle it i don't know but as far as they know at the minute because so many people are vaccinated people aren't getting hospitalized so mm. it's looking good Sixty thousand a day bullshit that guy's lying um i think let's have a look fuck off you don't have sixty thousand infections a day in the uk right now i don't believe that um it went from 500 to 12,000 in one week. Yeah, it looked like it peaked about 40, 50,000 per day. 
she sounds really bad but once again if you look at the hospitalizations they're actually looking pretty good well let's see how the uk does it's going to be interesting how the uk oh no, yeah we are the pioneers at the minute so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes yeah pioneers i'm actually really excited pioneers the whole world is looking at the uk like like a child that puts a nail in his nose and like <laughs> oh where's that gonna go let's just take a look you could say that england potentially could be taking a dive huh huh did you watch the euros yes yes <laughs> luckily you lost luckily luckily, <laughs> luckily. that was you... not deserved bro do you think the right team won yes 100 percent Italy played perfect. They were 29 games unbeaten. 100%, man. Yeah, yeah. Their the win streak right now is ridiculous, isn't it? Something like 30 games or something like yeah, that? Yeah, pretty, pretty big, man. 1.5 years, we have the World Cup. That's going to be interesting. I remember your prediction. I remember you saying something like Spain and Italy were... You said that Spain and Italy are going to be big favorites to win. And you also said that it might have been England's time. What, what were the other predictions you made about Euros? I don't remember. I think these. I always predict that every cup, European or World Cup, has always one underdog that performs well. In this case, Denmark. Uh, and if you predict that underdog, you can make good money. But uh, yeah, I will... Italy, Belgium, Spain look like they're going to get there. I like to admit, I like to think that um, I was okay with the result. Because Italy did play better in the final, definitely. The possession one shots on target were through the roof so they definitely played overall better but i like to admit that i didn't care but god damn i was so devastated when they didn't win <laughs> I was so it must devastated. have felt bad as an englishman yeah but there was so much controversy where the whole world was against england the dive of sterling uh, the behavior of the fans uh, nobody likes england anyway uh, boris johnson brexit all that stuff everybody wanted you to lose and uh, i guess so and but once again it's not it's not a popularity contest football it's end of the day it's kicking that ball in the net isn't it and then the day and uh to get to that point italy and england definitely proved themselves you know yeah especially when they pushed out denmark with a fake dive that was a good proof of the english skills well are you saying you knew better than the ref you knew better than the var <laughs> that was not that there was uh, the whole world Whoa. fucking uh knows it man Whoa. anyone who knows yeah. anything about football knows that was not a penalty man and it's ridiculous that you have the bat system and if there's like this rule, only if it's really debatable, the vet system can interfere. In that case, the vet should have called, listen, mate, you made a mistake. This is not a penalty. Well, that's the purpose of VAR, isn't it? Yeah, yes, uh, but there are certain rules. Uh, uh, what is the rule? I don't want to say this wrong. Um, only if the referee expresses doubt, the bar can overrule his ruling. And in that case, the second dive, the referee had no doubt it's a, a penalty, so the VAR system, whatever they think, doesn't matter. Bakun mm. is a bit butthurt over there. Hey, you can't be. That was a... Imagine being Danish there. That, ah, what the fuck, man. But that's what makes I mean, football so beautiful. It's that referees do mistakes, right? I, I mean, I'm on the losing end as well, so I can relate to Bokon in this case. I mean, the truth is, for, for the teams to get as far as they actually did was nothing short of absolutely incredible, you know? Especially the way they began and the fact that I mean, this is the best England team that we've had since they won the World Cup 50, 60 bloody years ago. So, I mean, we're, we're constantly on the losing end and we're looking for that one that one time of a shining star. Wait, Germany recently won the World Cup, didn't they? How did, uh, where were you? 14, were I think, 14. I was at home with a friend watching and then we went to the city and everybody was like having a party. But we were just watching it. We had no friends anyway. That was a big did thing you? back then. Yeah, it was a big thing. Were you genuinely into the national team at the time? Yes, 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 you can say that. Yes, yes. Oh, I've, I've always, back then, not anymore, I was a football guy. Like, really, not just one of these... You know how, when you have a World or European Cup, suddenly all the normies are football fans? And they're like, yeah. ah, do this. They don't even know the names of the players. And I, I think I've always, and still, I'm a bit deeper, man. I understand who players are and shit. Mostly because of FIFA. FIFA is teaching me a lot. <laughs> who players are and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. Draw. Yeah, 7-1, Brazil, Germany. Oh, shit. 7-1, never forget, man. That was a... Oh, my goodness. That was a crazy fucking day, man. When, when oh, Germany yeah. was good. But Germany now has to reform. They're reforming now. They need to completely remake uh, this team. What do you think has gone wrong? I have a theory about sports, everything. Business, everything. Streaming, sports, whatever. It's the hunger theory. 
When you run out of hunger, your performance will always be lower. Why did Italy win? Why was England so good? Why was Denmark good? Because they were hungry. These people cared. They pushed themselves. They were motivated. They were friends. While you have, for example, the German team uh, that already, they all have Champions League titles. They have World Cup titles. And they're like, oh, whatever happens, I don't care. I have, I'm a millionaire. I have everything. And even though you might not uh, admit it, the hunger is a thing. Hunger is a thing. And yeah, Germany just had zero hunger. These are old players that achieved everything. They are super rich. Uh, yeah, I think they were missing the hunger. And you saw that when younger people were substituted in the German team, like Muziala, 18 years old, he played amazing. Mm. You see that yeah, young, yeah, yeah. these young people, they want to prove themselves. They're hungry, man. Hunger is a very important thing. Look at Conor McGregor. I think Conor McGregor is out of hunger. That's why he sucks so much right now. Beautiful example. Yeah, he is on a losing spree. That's good, because that's what I was going to come on to next. So, uh, McGregor, Poirier. Big one, big one. I was actually thinking of two story. Uh, Dustin Poirier has a charity, and he was selling his gear, like his shirt and his gloves, on eBay. But it went up to 28k. That was a bit too much. I was about. I was thinking of getting that. Uh, but that was uh, that's a bit too much. Very interesting. So, I think we disagree on this. So, I'd, I'd like to hear your take on it. So, my take is that, yeah, go. it was a trilogy. Here it was go. a straight KO in the first one, Here straight KO go. in the second, one for Connor, one for Poirier. And then the third one, we had a doctor stoppage. And um, not downplaying, a win is a win. I just personally feel like when you win by a doctor stoppage, um, it, it takes away some of that win. What do you feel about that? I highly disagree, and uh, no offense, I told you this all over in private. I think that's how normies and casuals think about this. First Damn. of all, first point, I don't like this thinking of, oh, it's 1-1 one, one now. You have to always look at the timeline. Um, when they fought, it was many, many years ago. When you look at Conor McGregor and Poirier right now, you have to apply current laws to current meta. And in the current meta, Poirier will win 9 out of 10 times, easily. Uh, secondly, Dr. Stoppage. All these casuals are saying, oh, it was a Dr. Stoppage. First of all, and no one can disagree, the first round was a demolishment of McGregor. He got ragdolled, he got destroyed. Secondly, let's take a look here. Dustin mm -hmm. Poirier, check. Dustin Poirier. Where is that? What is this? Oh, I still see a lot of people analyzing oh. this whole sequence and wondering why. Because there's this theory that I agree with, that McGregor was throwing a kick, and then it was checked by uh, Dustin Poirier, and when you, your kicks get checked, your shit will break. And I think the doctor stoppage was introduced by skill of Poirier. Why Conor McGregor's life broke. Okay. It's still What's he saying? One sec. I made a breakdown about it, and I analyzed <laughs> one sec, one sec. the quote-unquote check kick. Mm -hmm. I analyzed the, it was the elbow sequence that now a lot of people are bringing up again. But I, I personally... I think that people that don't want to give Poirier the win here are filthy casuals. John They're Kavanaugh, ridiculous. Connor's coach, made that. It, it, wouldn't it be amazing to simple. see a full five-round slog between Poirier and uh, Connor? Wouldn't that be amazing? No, no. That's uh, once again, I love you, man. But it's such a casual thing to say. No, I know. In, I know in, in fighting, there is no uh, fighting is real. It's not entertainment. And when Poirier is just so much better than McGregor, there should never be a five-round fight. If he destroys him in one round, then that's what it should be. I just, I think I'm maybe coming from uh, an entertainment perspective of real fight. You know what I mean? I, I, and I feel like, you know, I didn't really understand Khabib as much as I did back in the day when I used to watch his fights. But I think now I get them more because I feel like he, he really works them down. You know, it's not just mm. a, a choke and it's over. He's like working them down round by round. He, I don't think he many many... He won by TKO in the first round. I think they were all like slogs into third or fourth round. And I feel like with that, I, I felt, I felt the kind of like that was a legitimate win. You know, what I mean? he 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 delivered the most uh, blows and he eventually made them tap. You know, and it, it felt in that case that there's no way you can take away his loss. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it, it it really sucks for fighters often that sometimes their wins are not seen as legit, which is very very sad sometimes. Like very often. What about um, a no contest then? Would you would you take away the win for that? No, no. What do you mean? In this like, case, uh, here, what? Um, is it no contest? Is that the way I refer to it as where like someone does an illegal blow and therefore throws yes. them? Are match? you asking if Conor Mc, uh, McGregor versus Poirier should be no contest? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm saying, would it take away the legitimacy of a win if it was won by no contest? 
Yes, because that's the rule. Okay. There's a oh, perfect okay. example of arguably maybe the greatest fighter of all times, John Jones, who has only one loss. And he was when he was the, knee. the loss that he got there was an illegal knee and he was yeah, winning, yeah, yeah. but he was breaking the rules. You should know the rules as a professional. I think that's a deserved loss. Yes, it okay. sucks because it right. destroyed his uh, reputation. It is, sure. it yeah, is, yeah. Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to see how far you would push the like what a win would be considered. That's all. But yeah, I, I mean, Khabib tweeted something after that fight and he said, a good will always beat evil. And to me, Conor McGregor represents evil, man. The, what he's become is a disgrace. It's very, very sad. He was the biggest influence to my life outside my family. And what a bad human being he's become. It's very, very sad. And now my idol is Khabib, man. I'm a big fan and the way he teaches you how to behave as a man is, is beautiful. And I'm... Jesus Redex, bro, Spartan League. What are you talking about? Is there about? any way you he could get it back idiot. for you? What would, what would Connor have to do to get it back for you? He was trying it, uh, I think, two years ago when he came back to the UFC, where he would start being humble again, not an asshole, not not uh, listen to this. Uh, what's your name? Spartan League, you dumb motherfucker. Uh, don't cheat on your wife, don't take drugs. Be a good idol to your millions of fans. Don't punch an old man. Don't be toxic. Don't attack people's family. Don't attack a bus like this and don't get repercussions. Stop being a cunt on all these levels. That will be the first step. And then go back mm -hmm. to actually training and actually be successful. Yeah, yeah, That's what you should do. But he didn't do it. He had the chance. He's still a, one of the GOATs. What he achieved in his early days is remarkable. Eddie Alvarez, Jose Aldo, that is ridiculous. But once the money and the fame came, uh, Khabib said something in the last interview last week, which is, and I love that. I love when he said that. He said, money and fame don't change you. Money and fame show who you really are. And if you follow these words, McGregor shows who he really is. And it's not very nice. Not very nice. Not something, not someone who I want to look up to. I feel like. Yeah. It, it's funny because it's hard to take away the banter from Connor because Connor is the banter you know so it'd be really weird for can, can you just imagine it like maybe connor does win a title maybe connor does win a series of fights in a row and then all of a sudden entering into one of the fights at the press conference he's all of a sudden just completely humble can, can you imagine the that's what he did that? in the second dustin poirier fight yeah oh oh really yeah he was he was like that he was just really cool and chill and everything was nice but then he realized that this bullshit doesn't work he has to get back into uh trash talk because he thinks he's gonna uh, psychologically beat his enemies like that. And he did back then, he did. But every true Conor fan knows this now. It's not the meta anymore. Five years ago, when Conor McGregor was doing his psychological warfare, it was insane. It worked, it was sick. When he does it nowadays, you just cringe. He He's making shit up. He's lying. He, he's acting like he's the greatest, even though he's not yeah. anymore. And you just don't buy it anymore. If people still buy that, you must be 12 years old, man. You, you just don't buy it anymore. How does this relate to what we do? How does the passion and the hunger relate to us? Do you think at some point maybe we'll reach some big milestone? You'll reach 10k okay. subs maybe and I'll reach a million subscribers and maybe I'll lose the passion and that may affect my performance. Do you think that could ever happen? That is a beautiful question and maybe one of the big, biggest well, questions a YouTuber slash streamer has to think about. What is hunger? Where does it go? What does, how does it infect you? That is a thing I think a lot about. Because, um, first of all, I would guess if you lose passion and hunger, your content is going to suffer and you're going to be a so-called washed-up streamer. Uh, you, there's some of them, I'm not going to say any names, but you see they don't grow anymore, they even go downhill and stuff like that. And the people feel that if you're out of hunger, they feel that shit. But also I think that streaming sometimes can work when you're out of hunger. A great example is, uh, I'm a big fan of, for example, Lyric and Summit. And if you look at Lyric and Summit, they're still heavily successful streamers. They're not rank one anymore, and they got very chill. You could maybe say they lost hunger. At least you can say Lyric and Summit, they got far more chill. And now they're on yeah. their level. It's a big level. They make millions of dollars. They're fine. So that is a, a force and also a great example. These people make a great living. They have their thing. They're not going to be rank one anymore with 100,000 viewers, but it's cool. It's okay. So... I guess once you reach that level, like these people sort of pop too, then it's fine. Dude, you, you are you are on a level where you make 100k a month, who the fuck cares? You don't need to be ranked 1 anymore. But I think the big thing is, and this is also a big tip to people in chat that want to become streamers or YouTubers, in the beginning of everything, a new job, you want to be YouTuber, streamer, in a sport, you have to be hungry, man. If you don't have the hunger, you will never 
get out of the swamp of of averageness, man. Which is why I like Grisha so much. Uh, Grisha is showing hunger. He has events. He has funny things. And then I look at Dankus, where I don't see hunger. He always does the same. He has his little dumb memes and, oh, I'm playing heavy tank Germany or Russia. I don't see the hunger there. Where I think this is very, very important. You need to do what you feel. Uh, and the final thing I want to say, thank you, Slav and Neubaum. It's a big thing, I think, because I'm sometimes scared that I lost my hunger. I don't think I have yet, but I'm sometimes scared. What if I one day wake up and out of hunger and I'm just sitting here with 800 viewers every day playing Warhammer 2 in 2025 or something? That scares mm. me sometimes. Uh, you have that fear too? Um, I think... I, 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 I was about to go into tangent about when you've got the luxury of being on top, you don't need to be a tryhard anymore. When you're on top, you, everything you do and every minute every day can be done for your own entertainment, your own fun, your own pleasure. There's never a, like you can relate to this, there's never a game that you play to say, oh, I need to get the, get the views today. I need to get the subs today. It's just a game that I play because I find it fun. And I think that's the difference between like, like all the big guys just listed off there, like Shroud and Lyric and whatnot. They're on top now and everything they do is solely for their own fun and entertainment. It's less about the grind and more about I guess sustain and just have a good time, I suppose. Do I ever worry? I don't think I've really thought too much about it. I kind of worry sometimes when I, maybe I'm just a little bit ill and I just don't have the enthusiasm. But I, when I come back and I get back on the horse, I'm almost twice as fast as I am right now. I'm in the flow right now. And I hope I continue this rhythm for as long as I can, I guess. Hmm. This, this hunger thing is really, really interesting, man. Really interesting. Other people take your place. It's very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Because if you look about it, not trying, again, not to be arrogant, how did I become a streamer on Twitch? Because I was the hungry Hoi4 guy. And yeah. I don't know if this is offensive when I say this. When I started streaming four years ago, and I looked at you, this is, I just want to be honest. When oh I looked God, at you, Alex, Boku, and stuff like that, you guys were on a good level, good content, everything good. But I've never felt this hunger to be on top with you guys, which is totally fine, totally okay. But I think that I benefited from that because I was like really hungry to completely wreck everything over. And that's a perfect example of how this hunger can be uh, very important. Well, the thing recently that I, that I never realized about myself, it's like a path of self-discovery, is that I'm really reactive to jealousy more than I'd like to believe. And when I'm constantly around people that are overachieving me, I feel like it gets in the way of my motivation. I feel like without that noise of other people that are larger than me, and more successful than me, I'm able to just plow and go on quicker. Like with you, for instance, I don't really see you as a competitor. And probably that's the reason why I get along with you so well, because you're doing your Twitch thing and I'm doing my YouTube thing. I know you've got the YouTube thing going on at the same time, but that's almost Marconi's you slash your baby, you know? And with that in mind, I, I, it doesn't like cloud my judgment and get in the way of, like it becomes too emotional, I suppose, emotionally invested in something. Yeah, it's very and, adult, though. very adult to think like that. Yeah, it, it, it is. But I mean, sometimes you have to accept some parts of your personality that suck. And one of mine is that I just can't ha ha handle high pressure situations. And I and I get jealous a lot. So I, I think you just have to come to terms with yourself and then move on from there and make the best of what you've got. Yeah. I, I personally always think that rivalry is so good. Uh, I, I, once again, I just want to be honest. Sometimes I yeah. sit here at night and I'm alone. And what I'm going to say now is in no way this it's actually compliment. Uh, I'm sitting here and I'm checking Twitch and I see Bokwin, 2,200 viewers in his game. I see Dankus with 700 viewers after just one year of streaming. And I'm not jealous there. I swear to God, I'm not sitting there like, oh, I, it motivates me. I'm like, man, these guys are doing well. They're coming and it motivates me to, okay, Tommy, maybe you have to step it up. Let's let's show some good content, man. Let's. I like that rivalry. It, it ben I benefit from that. I yeah. think it's good. Like yeah. if some guy, if some random dude would come right now and completely destroy me, on the Hoi 4 views and stuff, I I would love it. I would be very, I feel very attacked, but I, it would motivate the fuck out of me. I like that shit. I and maybe sometimes I'm missing that, like someone challenging me, maybe. <laughs> In the past, you definitely were. I mean, <laughs> not to bring up the past or anything, but I remember you and me and Remy, they were like your favorite banter tools to motivate yourself. And I felt like they were actually realistic goals for you to achieve. And then obviously with I've became, I'm part of what you do more, and then Remy's kind of drifted off in the other direction, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But what, whatever you think about Remy or whatever, 
that, yeah, yeah. In a weird way, look, uh, four years ago, chat, something happened. Remy don't underset something like, uh, in the context, we don't have Tommy and we don't have to take Tommy and Marconi serious. They don't have any subs, which is fine. I have nothing against Remy. I even thank him for that because when Remy said that, these guys don't matter because they don't have no subs. Me and Marconi, it refueled from that. We yeah. loved that. It, it made us work even harder. I, I miss that. I miss someone calling me out like that. Call me out more, chat. <laughs> Come on then, guys. So, so, Tommy, who's your next competitor? Who is the next mountain to climb? Name me that mountain. Sometimes... It's, I'm getting older, so that's gone a bit. I just want to... Maybe the new rival is yourself. There's like the there's like, like two Tommies, and I want to beat the weaker Tommy. Oh, I like that. That's good. That's <laughs> good. But sometimes I, I gotta be honest. I look at uh, two streamers. I'm a, I'm a big MMO fan. I watch MMO streamers, and there's two streamers called one is called Stay Safe, and one is called S Fan TV. And uh, I'm nothing against them. I'm a big fan. I watch them a lot. But my personal goal is to be on their view count or even beat them. That's my goal. Because I yeah. think, and here comes the arrogant fuck. Here, this is where I'm arrogant. I sometimes watch streamers that have 3k viewers, and I think I'm so much more entertaining than them. Super arrogant, but I, wa I watch streamers, they have 4k viewers, and they just sit there the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Chad. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And I think I can beat that. I think I can. Just gotta work on it. Thank you, Papa. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with that, yeah. So what's next i think we could probably ask a question from the chat actually blowing through these topics a lot quicker than i thought i were i have time still i'm going to yeah, a restaurant yeah, today. dude I, I for some reason this is some really privileged thing i since my life got better and uh i think i asked this you before i feel like when you are raised without money like you, you don't have a lot of money when you're raised once mm. you are a bit successful and have a bunch of money you have a coping mechanism. There's something you get addicted to. One guy likes to buy expensive shoes. One guy likes cars. I, for example, I love restaurants. I, I dude, sitting in restaurants means everything to me. D did you ever, do you have something like that? You know what I mean? Something that you couldn't afford back then, but now you're, you're, you're into that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I've always been like a big nerd for electronics, like cameras and expensive oh, tech porn. and whatnot. <laughs> I, and before, I'd always think to myself, can I afford it? Uh, do I have to save up for that before I want it? I never said I could never have it, but it's something Another I always see as a mountain to climb and an objective. I guess it's a bit like you and being competitive. My way of being competitive is finding something expensive that I, have, I can work hard for and then I can eventually afford one day. Well, anyway, the difference back then and now is that I just buy it. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. even think about it. You know, boom, just buy it. You know what I mean? That ability to hit buy now on Amazon is yeah. such a weird button to press, you know? Yeah, very... Good stuff. Chat, do you have any questions for the boomers? What is something you've always wanted to ask us? This is a good segue, actually, because I used to do sales job in the past, call center sales jobs. And <clears throat> in interviews, one of the common things they used to say to me is like, what's something expensive that you want? What's your dream car? What's your dream house? You know, like, describe it to me. And I never really understood that because I never had the motivation when I worked the job because I hated the job. So I was never motivated to work more because I always thought I was at my limit anyway. But what they were trying to do is find that hunger in you, you know, that passion, the way you described it with Connor, like the idea that if there's something expensive that you want to buy one day, you will work your absolute titties off to eventually afford that thing. But and, the, uh, the danger of that is that once you reach your goal, an emptiness comes in. The well, I mean, you're always going to set a new goals, new objectives. New, yeah, if new it's like it's some ultra goal, in. like I want to be a millionaire. And once you're a millionaire, you're going to be like, oh, well, I don't feel any different now. <laughs> But it's like hiking or mountain climbing. I feel like you never really get out of the hobby when you climb the mountain of your dreams, do you? You find another, something else to ascend, you know? And I think that's why I always use the analogy of mountain climbing and hmm. reaching the summit. Okay, we have some uh, questions from chat. First of all, do you pay your taxes? Do you pay your taxes, Dave? I do. Do you pay them uh, quarterly? Or how do you do it? Um, I just say when it's due, and I usually pay it like two days before it's due. Probably different in the UK. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's always every three months they take it, and it always goes up and shit. And then after one year, they're like, "Oh, you didn't pay enough. You need to mean it some more." That's God, going on. Um, it's, it's due at the end of this month, actually. Thanks for reminding me, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you willing to play the next Twitch fad to go to the channel? I don't know what that means. The next Twitch fad? I don't get that. I don't understand. Are you afraid of the future, David? Are you afraid of the future? Am I afraid of the future? No, I embrace the future more than I did. But if you asked me 10 years ago, I probably would have been afraid of it. Yeah, Knowing I that fully I was doing agree. The 
yeah, it's the, the idea that you're doing something monotonous and repetitive and you hate it, the future's scary. But if you're doing something you love and you enjoy, you embrace the future. Fully agree. Yeah, when I was 22, I was afraid, oh, what if I don't finish university? What if I don't get a good job? What if my life doesn't get better? Yeah, true. Uh, Twitch, uh, joining the next big Twitch hype thing. Uh, chat, uh, a big part of my new way to approach the stream is that, yes, I will start to now write Twitch dick. Meaning, what I'm... I'm a guy that always plays old games. I play Vermintide and Warmer 2, which is not good for business. And a plan I have in the future is that if there's a big new thing, like Dying Light 2, I will play that stuff. I will play it for like two or three days, maybe catch some new viewers. I will do that. When GTA 6 comes out with roleplay, I will do that. I, I want to write... I want to play fresh games to maybe attract new content and new viewers. Yes, I want to do that. But right now there's a summer hole. There's nothing going on, really. Are you worried that you might play these games and they might not stick with you and your audience might be passionate, but you're not? Could happen, yeah. That's really interesting. What do you do then? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been there because I felt like I've been playing games for the audience and not for me, and it's not been fun. Uh, but I wouldn't ever do that again now. Now I know how much of a pain in the ass it is. I, I do the same because I think chat is not actually that dumb. I feel like when I play something and I don't feel it and I just do it for views or something, chat feels that. They, it, it, it's weird. Yeah. I don't talk. Every, they, they feel it. I feel it. You, you can't fool them, I would say. Yeah, and I think I noticed that too, actually. I CK, watch your stream. Yeah. The, the um, last CK3 stream I had with Sardinia was a perfect example. I, I tried <laughs> so hard to make CK3 work, and I, I just I wanted to almost vomit, man. I, I couldn't do it, and everybody felt that. I think. What? Are, uh, let's talk about the grade A content. Let's talk about the 10k viewers, maybe. Uh, the next Hoi4 DLC, no step back. I don't think 10k viewers. Uh, really? Uh, wait, I got a message today. What? Didn't you get? What, what was the peak views you got for CK3? Oh, that was 9,900 9, or something. Oh, but if you were 4 DLC, that's not that big. Nah, I think I disagree. Well, I disagree. You think so? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to go uh, harder, though. Uh, where's that message? I. Uh... This is a new tournament that Paradox are supporting about the multiplayer version of the International. I would love to help organize this style of tournament. What is this? I actually haven't touched this at once yet. This is the first time I'm looking at this. Look at this. Okay. The historical works of Iron Fall Community Cup. I've seen this. I think I've had an email. It's the first time before. I've ever seen this. Uh... Actually, some names that you know. Okay, they're like. Yeah, uh... I see that. Yeah, Modred Viking. Who's organizing this? I have no idea. Interesting. Looks very interesting. Uh, I think people the realized the international was very successful. I know for a fact that the Paradox staff was a big fan, and they want to sponsor the next one. And no, interesting, interesting. Whoa, are you trying to? Are you confirming there is going to be a next one? I don't know yet. It, it was very hard to make the international, but uh, maybe if it needs to be interesting. What's impossible is no arrogance or ego. They do this because of us, which is fine. It's, it's, a, it's a compliment. It makes no sense to make a Hoi Fall International next year with the same rules and stuff. That is yeah. not going to happen. It needs to be something different. I, I haven't thought about it yet. Uh, we need some new ideas, something. Uh, something that I really hated is the competitors. They were below 18 and a lot of them behave like fucking idiots. Um, especially behind the scenes. I don't really want to deal with that. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have an international next year. A basic idea I have is either a one-on-one -on -one again with more detail like air and stuff. Or like they do, this is an idea I was um, talking about uh, months ago of actually uh, Axis versus Allies in Russia. Yeah, something like that. Like a big, big game. But the problem is cheaters, desyncs, uh, the game is seven hours long. You can't fucking keep 50,000 viewers that long, blah, blah, blah. I... We will have to think about it. We will have to think about it. Mm. <sighs> but maybe next year. I mean, it was so unbelievably successful that is, uh, that was probably the most successful paradox thing ever and it's screaming for a second one the problem is though once again if there's a second one it needs to be better in many regards that's for sure all right i'm gonna cut to the chase i'm gonna ask the odd question and this is gonna fill in filter in with a lot of things we've already talked about passion whether you're doing it for the views or whether you're doing it because you love it is it in a goal is it in an objective this is the question the chat 
is all been dying to ask. Germany meta Hoi4 MP game. When is it going to happen, dude? When are you going to play Germany? You fucking idiot. What a dumb question, man. Now you're tricking all these 12-year-olds. Yeah, Tommy. Why did you play MP Matrix anymore? You suck at the game now, Tommy. Arrogant guy. Only playing minors and then complaining <laughs> about the others. <laughs> My point is, as I said for weeks, there is no meta at the moment. 80% of good players left. There's only... The only people that play Hoi4 right now is five children that are below 15 and two cheaters. That's why you don't see Tommy K Germany, Russia, Japan, because there's nothing to prove. There's only idiots. Games will mostly end with cheats or toxic dumb shit. That is why you don't see that, man. Not because I'm scared or anything. It's just not worth it right now. And I'm thinking of... Uh, I, I want to copy Bokuen. Bokuen has a group of people he trusts, and he plays right forward with them. That's something I want to go now to. I'm giving away a role in Discord of people that I fully trust, and then maybe we can have a game with people that are really fully trusted. No toxic children, no cheaters, and just have a fun time, man. Maybe then a meta will return. Yeah. Wow. But that was literally we talked about this. If you ever, if you would see me tomorrow play Germany multiplayer, it was it will only be for sucking viewer dicks, man. It will just be for give me views and subs, and that is pathetic, man. No, we just talked about this playing something you don't want to do and playing meta ma majors right now is just will will be dead. Don't feel it at all. It would just be fake. Why do you play meta games at all then? You mean in the last weeks? Yeah, what was also And here's the one? point. Why does Tommy play minors? Because I enjoy that. I enjoy the the biggest fun to me on stream is to take a Hoi4 nation and try something out that's never been done before. Like play a successful Brazil, play a Brazil successful Australia. I enjoy that. I played a successful Japan ten times. I don't know why people want to st still see that, man. I think they're kind of stuck in the past. That's why Did I played just... these nations. Sure. Do you ever feel like people could interpret that as you're afraid? to play Germany because you feel like... Yes, obviously, you if you are very unintelligent and a an, uh, complete <laughs> monkey, you will think I'm afraid because you can't see over the horizon and see what truly is happening. Do you want me to stream four years of Germany uh, every day like I'm Dankus to get free views and subs? That's so boring. <laughs> How fucking boring is that? And I don't Damn, need to police a bunch of 12-year-olds, man. I thought he was doing well. It's like when you're on top and you take a look... Like you're Lionel Messi and you stop... When Lionel Messi retires one day and he goes to a local football court, little kids, chat, will come to him and be like, What's up, Messi? You want to fight us? You suck, Messi. You suck. And Messi is going to be like, Dude, I achieved everything. I was probably the best football player ever. Who the fuck are you? Who are you talking to, man? That's kind of what's going on here, man. All these little nobodies in YouTube comments are like, Oh, Tommy is such a loser. Now. Blah, 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 blah. Who are you, bro? What do you think? Man? <laughs> fuck these people, man. Damn. And another big oh. point is, and you, people like you and Alex knew that years ago, it is such a big investment to join a multiplayer Hoi4 game, knowing oh God, yeah. that most of the time it's going to end with these things, bugs, cheats, toxicity. It's a huge investment that mostly ends in nothingness. The biggest deal for me is the time commitment. I can't handle like a five, six, seven hour game in one sitting. I can't handle the desyncs and the lobbies and the rehosts. That, that's, that stuff's pain. It's pain. I just want to play the game and i'm not playing the game when i'm looking at a lobby yeah i i also fell in love with a bit of single player man so like like enjoying a good kaiser like one that is so much more fun than chilling with these i'm just i don't know i feel like after five thousand hours of multiplayer i just i truly just came to hate the multiplayer community man it's it's very hard for me to talk to them chill with them listen to them it makes me just cringe and that's a big reason you don't see that much anymore as i said hoi 4 multiplayer is a game killed by its community all the educated people they left they play other games now and only a bunch of weirdos are left in my opinion and i don't i don't give a fuck about showing that i'm the king of these weirdos not at all Let how about that. how about why not co-op why don't we have uh get chat would you like this dankus uh grisha and tommy all co-oping germany how do you chat? Do you feel it's, it's, it's like you just throw everything the trash I just said. That doesn't change the fact that the games are going to be a mess. No. Well, see, it's a fan spectacle. Like, go yeah, in knowing it's, like it's going to be a views car crash. And everybody likes it. it I just yeah, feel why like not? But that's, we just talked about this. That will be me acting like I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, the final question. I'll leave, I'll leave the best till last. The best till last. 
Something happened in the last Euro final between England and Italy, okay? Something that happened even before the ball was kicked, okay? And both teams took a knee before the kickoff. How do you feel about that, Tommy? Why do they do it again? Can you explain it? Um, my understanding is it's showing solidarity against racism. That's and a big there was there, there was an instance. I think it was it was it Denmark or Russia. It was someone in Russia, and one team did it. The other team did it, but Russia views. So they were the only ones stood up. Oh, that's a big thing, David. That's a big thing. First of all, in its core, it's not a bad thing. Secondly, right. you could argue that stuff like this doesn't belong in politics. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't belong in sports, sorry. Which I think it doesn't. It should belong there. Sports is so influential, you should have uh, certain messages. In you should make sports sterile, because life isn't sterile. Mm. A big problem I have with stuff like that, and I hope I... Here we go, man. When... The knee, or for example, in Pride Month, all these companies are changing their picture on Twitter. Yeah. In my opinion, a lot of solidarity with with anti-racist movements, LGBTQ, is very, very fake and hypocritical. Lots of types companies act like they care about gay people, but they don't. They just do it to 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 be to look ethical, to to make the money. I mean, look at Activision Blizzard. They have the pride flag during Pride Month, but they fucking harass all the women at work. One woman just killed herself. It's so hypocritical, man. Uh, so many people always... It's... Here's my point. It's very easy to go down on your knees, but actually doing something and actually actively helping is an another topic, man. And I feel like it's better to actually actually do something other than act like, oh man, look at me, I'm such a hero. I take a knee, man. Wow, that's not that hard. It's much harder to really do something. That's how I think about this stuff. So. I think when it, when a company shows mainstream approval for a uh, a movement, um, let's say LGBT, by changing the logo to a rainbow, I think it shows at that point it's made it's already reached the mainstream. I think that the point mm. of uh, raising awareness has died because I think everyone's aware of it. Because let's be real, if a corporation um, did a political move that everyone disagreed with. No one would buy their products anymore. But we saw, for the most part, universal solidarity on Twitter and every other yeah, social media You're actually right. Platform. Doombot is just saying in chat, visibility is the first step to progress. Uh, you, you're, you're right. You're right. It's it's the first step. I just, one thing that I sometimes feel like, and maybe that's just the old German boomers, that a lot of solidarity I see in the world is is very hypocritical and fake. It's, 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 it's like... Well, you see it as virtue signaling, don't you? Uh, I, I, I guess so, yeah. Uh, do I have a good example right now? Um, I don't know. I don't have a good example right now. I just always feel like, you know, let's have an example. In Germany, you have a rally for refugees. A rally for refugees. Now, first of all, it's 99% white people. And I always ask myself, I don't know the answer. A person that's part of this rally, did they ever actually do something in their life for refugees, like actively? Still, you're right. Going to the rally first is a first step. But I sometimes feel like people out there, they, they act like they have such a moral high ground and they're so... Oh man, I'm so good, but... Man, did you, did you ever... Do you even have contact to any refugees? Do you ever listen to them? Talk to... Tell, tell their stories, man? It's, that's maybe sometimes that what I feel. Sometimes it's a bit hypocritical. Especially companies, right? Companies... They, they, in in the Middle East they have a black flag and in America they have the gay pride flag. It's it's, it's not real. I, it's not real. If if I was to reach out, let's say to uh, awareness of discrimination against gingers in uh, Finland, and uh, I've never met a Finnish ginger before, am I allowed to advocate for that because I've never met one of these gingers? Sure, hundred percent. The thing is, though, that if you were a, maybe a left-wing left, right, a left -wing young liberal, you will do this and then talk about it on Twitter. You'd be like, guys, I did this, I did this, I'm such a good human. And that kind of destroys a little bit what you did, your achievement. Because you are only helping and accepting, etc., to make yourself feel better. And I'm calling out these people that want to make themselves feel better. When I see... When I... Pff, 
an example i was in the supermarket and a refugee comes in and he doesn't speak german and he has a question i would help yeah. him because i'm a human just because oh man this guy is just i'm just want to help and I, I don't do it to make myself feel better and be like oh man uh, self high five i'm so liberal that's my point i think all the stuff is important but it has to be truth in its soul i i feel like i guess what are you passionate about tommy what what gets what would something that you advocate for at least they're doing something good if it's selfish yeah you're right yeah fully agree with you marconi it's just the one thing i see sometimes that uh there's some hypocrisy man like like i, I don't know here here's a sorry if i don't answer the question sure, sure. Uh, should i go there i'm scared <laughs> maybe it's just very objectively oh, no. so yesterday i was at a concert okay yeah, and yeah. In this concert was 600 white people 600 the whitest people ever the only person of color was the drummer a black woman now uh the 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 band leader is calling out the band this is my keyboarder this is my blah 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 and when they called out the drummer the black person they cheered 10 times harder they cheered 10 times harder oh, God. what and then i i feel like Oh, no. At least I'm talking. I'll talk to you right now. It's a bit uh, not okay if you just jump into this like this, man. You can always come to the podcast if you want to, and uh, and I agree with that. I think it's cool, but I sometimes just feel like how many people make that decision to cheer louder there, out of fake reason, out of out of yeah, wow, know what I mean? A little bit. The true goal is equality, right? That everybody should. You, you guys understand make... me a bit. What difference did it make his skin color in that case? Could they just have liked him regardless of his skin color? Yeah, that would be true equality. But some people well, are there, there, there. Did you know they, that? Did you I mean, them? they don't probably have bad uh, 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 ambitions they want to support. I fully get that. It's not bad. I just always ask myself, is it fully true? And Do sometimes I feel. Louder? Sorry. Do you think they cheered louder because he was black? Yes. 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 Okay. So, some, some, yeah. And and I sometimes feel like. And I'm going into really weird territory now. Imagine you are this black person and they cheer louder for you. Do you think that's good and accept it? Or do you feel like, yeah, 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 you only cheer louder for me because I'm black and it's fake. I wonder what they think. And that's kind of what equality should be. We should ask them, what do they feel? It's not about us acting like we know everything. I wonder what that person feels about that. I think you could advocate for something without anyone backing you on being behind it. That's that specific marginalized group. I mean... Let's just say, okay, this is something I'm passionate about. All right, here you go. Dave's going to get on his pedestal on virtual signal. Okay, you ready for this? So I, I think that computer games might need to be more inclusive for women because I would like to see more girls have the hobby of being a gamer. And now, this doesn't benefit benefits me because it means that there's more views for my channel. And it also benefits all you guys, all the chat right now. Every single person in the chat right now, it benefits you because you're more likely to get laid. You're more likely to share mutual interest with someone that's a girl. I don't know how you could not advocate for this. And the truth is, when you're in the Call of Duty uh, lobby and you hear a female voice and you scream out, I don't know, C word or get in the kitchen, make me a sandwich, that rate, that isn't helping girls feel more inclusive in gaming. And it ain't helping you get laid. And that's something I'm really passionate about. Oh, there's a little, little, little feminist movement here by uh, Dave. Yeah, call me a feminist. Fuck it. I don't care. I fully agree. I fully agree. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm advocating for your dicks, guys. Come on. I agree. But it's a hot, <laughs> it's a, how do you solve that, though, right? That's really hard. And once again, it just comes down to education. You have to teach young men how to behave around women. Pretty much. Yeah. Come on, tell me something you're passionate about, Tommy. What would you... What, you would stand on a, uh, a street corner, hold up a placard... That's say, a very good question. Or what do what you would, represent? Uh, what represents you? What are you? That's a good question. What would I go out to demonstrate for? Wow. <sighs> Damn. I wouldn't even go to a ginger rights movement because I don't fuck them all, man. <laughs> I I will guess if I have a daughter or son one day and they say that there's a climate change rally, I want you to come, I will say yes, I guess. I think that. I will do that. You uh something about climate change, I guess. It has to be your daughter, it can't be you. No, because I, and here we go. Maybe I'm very, very wrong. 
and I'm gonna get shit later, that's for sure. I, I've always been a guy that didn't believe in demonstrations so much. I've always felt like, and I hope I'm wrong, I always felt like, oh, I'm gonna waste all my day walking around the city, uh, this is my message, and I'm not gonna change anything. I always yeah. felt about that. I always felt like if you wanna change something in this harsh world, you gotta get active, you gotta join uh, clubs, you gotta join organizations, you gotta join a political party, you got to know the right people, you have to organize. I've personally always felt like walking around the street screaming for eight hours is not helping much. I might be very wrong here though. I realize that. It's just how I always felt about it. Mm. Like, uh, in a way, people are very hypocritical, including me. I, I always talk about climate change, but look at me. I don't organize myself about it. I still drive uh, a CO2 car. I, I, I mean, me and Lisa, we take care, but I'm not doing enough. And I'm always sitting here, oh, climate change is real. That's very hypocritical. And don't you feel like you're having an impact? Just you've got a platform right now with 1,300 people watching right now. Just by you talking about it, you're having an impact. You don't have to, probably, need to yeah. do something. You don't need to. You don't need to buy that cheaper car. You don't need to buy that more energy efficient home. Just you mm. saying this out loud right now, you're having an impact. But that wouldn't that be like petting my own shoulder? Oh, I impact viewers, so I already did enough. I can do more. No, because your time is important. You Every don't... minute of your day is important. You're giving a sacrifice of your time. Yeah, I feel like it's petting my own back. I, I can. We, everybody can still do better. You don't need to drive 200 kilometers an hour, man. You don't need to do that. You don't. You don't need to fly to vacation five times a year. You don't need to do that. This is something right wingers yourself. say quite often, and I agree with. They say we live in a society, and I, and I like that expression because it it says that even though you may advocate for something because you're in a society you have to adhere to society's standards and the truth is it's hard to get by without a car but you can still advocate for green policies and the anti-climate change and still own a vehicle that's not a hypocritical position you are under yeah the yeah you're right i guess you're right yeah i just feel like everybody could do more like today right uh, here's a great example of once again me showing i'm a hypocrite i i had to go shopping today and I realized the car isn't here because Lisa took it for work. And I'm calling Lisa, Lisa, I can't go shopping. The car isn't here. And 10 minutes later, Lisa texts me, well, how about you just walk? And I realized, man, she's totally right. Yeah, what's wrong with me? And I actually walked. That is a great example of it's possible. You don't need to fucking, you know, you get some sun, you get some exercise. Yes, I was walking. I was walking. <laughs> you lost me walking. Recently. <laughs> Problem is always hey, a little excuse. As a ginger, I get so sweaty when I walk that I have to shower again. <laughs> true, true, definitely in this weather. And what are you passionate about? What would you go? What would what would you go for on the street for? Um, I guess I guess you do your advocacy where it's most relevant. And I suppose me having a platform on Twitch and talking about how we mean to be more inclusive to women in gaming, I feel like that's that's the impact. That's my placard that I'm waving. Um, I'd have to think about it. Other than else. I don't know. I, I'm I'm really I'm really for maybe I find maybe this is a reason why I'm into it. It's not necessarily because I'm trying to um, advocate for something greater than me. Maybe I just feel passionate about it because I like it, and I, I really am fascinated about electric cars. And I would love to see more subsidies towards those kind of cars. So maybe I would try and convince people this is something we should move towards. Hmm. Um, more people who own electric cars, I guess, the more cheaper yeah, they yeah, can. We should become. call this the Green Podcast. The Green Podcast. That's green right. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Damn, guy. I think that was a really good podcast. That has been one hour and four minutes, so that's over the hour mark. Do you enjoy this, Tommy? Yes, yes. It calms me down a lot. I always say this, Dave. I talked. About, uh, I thought about this in the kitchen yesterday, and I mean this, and I say it publicly. I've never had many friends, which was okay. It's cool. I have like only two or three real friends, which is cool. And I always felt like, especially with you and Alex Rambler. If I would live in the same city as you and Alex, I will try very hard to become your friend. I would call you guys to go to the cinema, to go bowling, play snooker, because I I really like you guys. So I say this when? to really show you when what <laughs> when hey, come on. Are we don't. Well, I mean, what do you mean when? The U yes, I mean, I'm thinking that it's the rest of the world, but it's just the UK that's had the COVID restrictions lifted. Yeah, I'm coming to the UK to play some bowling, man. So yeah, I really enjoy talking <laughs> to you because it's talking to when? a friend with a bunch of viewers, but. I'm, I'm with some part when you for example when you're Joe Rogan right and you get a guest yeah. this is not your friend you talk to them for good content knowledge blah blah it's not your friend but when I talk to you I feel like talking to a friend oh tell me which makes I it feel like, easy I feel like you're a friend to me as well you're beautiful man you're beautiful 
hearts in the chat uh, guys, if you want to see the podcast and uh, all the other past episodes, just Google Feed Tommy Podcast. I'm feeding Tommy Podcast. Feed Tommy Podcast. Don't Google Feed Tommy. That's that's what weirdos do. Don't do that. No, but that's the name of the podcast. I couldn't think of a better name. Feed Tommy? You can think of a... That's feed kind Tommy... of sexual. Feed Tommy Podcast, yeah. That's for feed the foot fetish, fetish, fet <laughs> fetishists, man. Jesus. No, feed, not feet. Feed. Feed, feed. feed like, I'm feed. Feedback Gaming, so feed Tommy. Give him food. Feed, feed him. Feed him Tommy. <laughs> say again, feed and then feed. Yeah, I'll pop in the chat. Feed Tommy. Podcast. No, say it out loud. Say it. Feed Tommy podcast. And now say it with T. Feed Tommy podcast. Dude, there's like such a mini difference, man. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Well, there you go. Maybe it's memorable. Re me think of feet, guy. <laughs> think of feet. <laughs> oh, I was actually not on full screen the whole time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Streaming. Dave, man, thank you very much. I wish you a great weekend, my bro. All yeah, it's been a pleasure, Tommy. I'll Many hear from kisses. you soon. Maybe Kai's right. Who knows? Hey, always, man. All the best, man. Bye, bye.